Hello my quilting friends, Leah Day here with another Sit Down Quilting Sunday video. I'm feeling spidery. I've got this creepy spider web design and it was another awesome opportunity to play with bobbin thread work. So I've got razzle dazzle thread in the bobbin and isocord thread on top and that made this super cool double sided quilt. So let's learn how to quilt this together. So the first step to spider web is to set your base and that is a set of wiggly lines that radiate from a central point. So I'm stitching this right across my quilting space, just basically from edge to edge. You can also quilt it from the center out. It's really entirely up to you. But because I'm doing bobbin work here, I want to break thread. I don't want to have to bother to tie off and bury all these thread tails. So, and I also don't want to have all those thread tails right in the center. So I'm just stitching right across. And you can see I can evenly space this out, but some spaces are a little bit more narrow, some places are a little bit wider, and that definitely makes it more interesting. You don't want a perfectly symmetrical, matchy, matchy spider web. <laughs> you know, you want it to be organic and, you know, a little bit asymmetrical, so that way you get a really interesting design. So here I'm just pulling up that bobbin thread. This is that chunky razzle dazzle thread that I love. And it's just a little bit of an ordeal to pull it up to the top here so that way it's on the surface. And then once I get it up, then I can start stitching nice and even. So definitely go back and check our videos on bobbin thread work on the Grace Cunique. I've done a couple videos on using this beautiful thread on this machine. And the biggest key here is just put it in your bobbin, see how it stitches, and then adjust your tension accordingly. So I crank down on my tension quite a bit in order to get it where it is right now. And you can see just how pretty and glittery this is on the back, or I should say the front. <laughs> Technically this side is the back. So now I'm gonna finish that up, just stitching right between those two lines all the way through and I'll break thread one last time. So now I've pulled up thread in the center of the quilt again and I'm turning this wiggly line design into a spider web and how you do this is by doing a spiral working from the center and you just hit the lines and kind of curve the line downward as you work from one line to the next. So here I'm just gonna stitch a gentle arch shape, connect with the next line, gentle arch shape, connect with the next line. But as I'm doing that, I'm also I'm spiraling around and making sure that my distance between those lines of stitching, honestly, you know, this is one of those things you kind of wanna vary. You want the lines to sometimes get wider apart and sometimes closer together. You, know, you want it to be organic and inconsistent. It looks more interesting that way. But you know, try it out and see what works best for you. If you like stitching it so that you have, you know, roughly an inch between these curves, that's fine too. You know, you can make it look however you want. I kind of like the idea of having the lines come a little bit closer just on one side. So like these three dips, I think I'm gonna have the lines come just a little bit closer through this section and then widen out a good bit over here. So I'm gonna go on ahead and start widening this out. And how I do that is I just aim further down that line and that's altering my art shape ever so slightly. And then now I'm much further spaced apart. You can see how much further apart my lines are now. I think that makes it a lot more interesting. That's really cool. And flip it up. You can see that glittery thread's really starting to show off. It's so nice and chunky on the surface. So I'm gonna keep working my way around, just stitching these curves. And as I come into this area, you see how I just change the angle that I'm stitching. I just bring those lines closer together and that's how I'm creating that effect. This is simple quilting scale, just altering the distance between the lines of quilting. And the, really the best way to think about it is just signing your name in cursive. You know, you can sign your name in cursive 
on a tiny little section of your check in your checkbook. And then you can also sign your name as big as a billboard if you needed to. And that's the same principles apply, just expanding the distance between those lines of quilting, expanding the size of the shape, and you can see how that radiates out. That really makes the spider web look more interesting. And here's what it looks like whenever I finished spider web. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot about quilting spider web, and this has inspired you to make something cool and creepy for the fall. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the machine that I'm using in these videos, this is the Grace Cunique 14 Plus, and I love quilting on this machine. I've really gotten attached to it, and I think it's such a great machine for quilters that are just needing that little extra space and really wanting to focus in on free motion quilting and ruler foot quilting, because that's really what this machine does best. Now, you can learn more about it at leahday.com slash grace. And if you'd like to call the company and ask for more information, if you live in the United States, make sure to mention that Leah Day said, hello, my quilting friends, and they'll give you a nice discount on your order. So definitely check that out. And until next time, let's go quilt. <laughs>